This is Community Forum, a service of Can TV. I'm your host, Juan Carlos Hernandez. Our guest today is Stephen McCullough from the Greater Chicago Food Depository. He's here to tell us about the depository's work and summer meal programs. Welcome, Stephen. Thank you very much. Well, it's great having you here today and especially to talk about such an important topic in, in our community. Um, tell us about uh, hunger here in Chicago and what it means to you and what it means to so many people. Right, and mm -hmm. so at the Greater Chicago Food Depository, every mm -hmm. year we serve over 800,000 men, women, and children. And- All uh, over the city? All over the county. All over so the county, we, so we beyond the, the city limits. We are the food bank for Cook County. Wow. And, uh, you know, um, both in the city and in the suburbs, uh, mm -hmm. there's a growing need um, around food access, and especially for children. Mm -hmm. So uh, for children in particular, once school's out, many kids don't receive um, lunch and breakfast. Mm -hmm. So this is a particular, particularly difficult time of the year mm -hmm. um, for kids getting access to healthy, nutritious meals. Sure, I, I do want to focus in on, on those programs, but tell sure. me about what you do. Some of our viewers might not be familiar with sure. you. So yeah, tell, no, tell us about what you do year round. Okay. And, um, who you work with and uh, so the Greater Chicago Food Depository is a network of 450 food pantries, soup kitchens, and shelters that we support here in Cook County. In Cook County, mm -hmm. and uh, they serve every single neighborhood community across the across the county. They could be in churches. They are community-based organizations, and for the most part, it's a volunteer network. Mm -hmm. So what we do as the food depository. Is, is a few things. Mm -hmm. One is we collect food. We, you have your traditional food drives and donations um, downtown and all across the county collecting food. So like, when a, a, like for example, when my church makes a call for like non-perishable items right. and they have them by the doors yes, and exactly. I bring in a sack of food and leave it there. Exactly, okay. so that food um, gets mm -hmm. collected um, and aggregated at the food depository. Okay. So if you come to our facility, it's a, a massive warehouse and mm -hmm. it's a great opportunity to volunteer uh, as well. So, so you're putting that out there too? Yeah, putting that out there too, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we collect food. About a third of the food that we receive at the food depository is through donations. Mm. Another source of food is through government commodities. So, okay. the, you know, the government uh, may work with farmers, and we may get apples from Washington or corn, and or or things like that from uh, government sources. Mm -hmm. And um, the last, uh, the final third is we buy, and the majority buy. we buy it ourselves and through generous donations from donors mm -hmm. and individual donors, especially. Mm -hmm. Um, we're able to buy um, a third of the food. So last year we distributed about 67 million pounds of food across um, the county. Wow, how does that, how does 67 million pounds of food look? So um, what hmm. that looks like, so um, all the urban gardens in Chicago, mm -hmm. com if you combine them, um, that's only a million pounds. Wow. So it's a major, mm -hmm. so I'll give you a little perspective. Yeah, yeah, you know, we. You know, um, urban gardening is great, but right. it's only the tip of the iceberg in terms of the need mm -hmm. in the community. Um, the majority of the food that we buy ourselves mm -hmm. um, through donations is fresh produce. And last year, mm -hmm. of the 67 million pounds, 22 million pounds were fresh produce, fruits and vegetables that went out into the community. We feel that it's really important mm -hmm. that um, whoever accesses our network has the most healthy nutritious food possible. Right, because it's, uh, just before the program we were talking about that that um, people who are in need of food um, are often affected by uh, diseases that direct, uh, directly impacted by what they're consuming. Absolutely, right? so mm -hmm. the top health issues are diet related. Mm -hmm. So if you talk to any health provider, it's diabetes, hypertension, and obesity mm -hmm. are the top three um, issues that especially vulnerable mm -hmm. and poor families face any at any given time. So mm -hmm. it's a really important for us at the Food Depository um, to put out the best and the highest quality food as possible. Mm -hmm. We You will never see us um, distribute Oreo cookies or cheesecakes mm -hmm. or, you know, mm -hmm. not that those things are good to eat, right, uh, but not necessarily the most healthy, right. you know, and really put out into the network, so. So um, I'm just curious, um, I am. It's how so you send out shoppers, or you have yes. agreements with uh, large, uh, big box stores. All or? of the above. So mm -hmm. we have a team um, mm -hmm. that 
all they do is go out and find the de best deals possible um, in terms of produce. I should hire you then <laughs> for the chef for me. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. And then um, we also have gr really great and generous donations from manufacturers and retailers. Okay. We have a great, what we call a food rescue program mm -hmm. that um, all of your major shopping retailers like Jewel, mm -hmm. Walmart, mm -hmm. um, we, we make specific stops at each and every store every single day, mm -hmm. picking up um, things that are not uh, retail ready. They may be perfectly good food, mm -hmm. and um, but they would not put it on their shelves. It doesn't meet their standards. Mm -hmm. But um, I think it, you know it creates really great opportunities to get mm -hmm. really good produce out into the community. And otherwise, that food might just be discarded. It would be wasted. Yes, it would go into a landfill. Mm. Wow. So uh, you gather all this food, and then uh, well, you were starting to tell me about the summer program, but sure. just tell me about. Uh, you have this food in your, you have warehouses? Yes, mm -hmm. so we have a single warehouse, it's 268,000 square feet, mm -hmm. and it's uh, a combination of shelf stable and freezer and cold storage space. Okay. And every day, we open the doors at 515 every day. Um, our network, member age of 450 partners, mm -hmm. either we deliver, mm -hmm. and so we have a great transportation network, um, or the, our partners come and pick up food. Mm -hmm. So it's really an in and out operation. We're constantly getting food into the warehouse and then getting it out into the community. So they, like you said, they go out to soup kitchens, uh, other f local food pantries. Right. right, so it could be a food pantry in a church basement. Mm -hmm. um, it could be uh, a YMCA, it mm -hmm. could be uh, um, an, another community-based organization. Mm -hmm. We're doing more work actually with schools now mm -hmm. than more than ever before. Um, we have what we call healthy kits markets, and which are basically pantries and schools. Um, we're in 17 school CPS schools. So right that now. so um, the way that's working. Tell, well, t you tell me how it's right. working. Right. So mm -hmm. um, the idea is really mm -hmm. to work with um, addressing child hunger and um, family, and you know, it's mm -hmm. kind of one in the same. Right. And we feel like the schools are really uh, great um, points of entry to make sure that the kids, when they get to have access to um, food, that mm -hmm. they would not necessarily have at home. Mm -hmm. um, it also is a great tool to get parents into the school. Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And what we found with the principals, they would say, I have not seen this child's parent in forever. I'm glad you, you're here, because we can have another conversation about that child's school performance as mm -hmm. well. So it, it really hits two really critical needs, the education aspect as well as the um, food, uh, food insecurity aspect of the work. Right, I just think about um, my own, I mean, what I've heard people be, uh, like connecting it to like my ex experience in, in church is like, if you want people to listen to <laughs> You have to feed them. <laughs> <laughs> you need yes. to feed them first. <laughs> right, right. So. Yeah, no, I mean, that's what's great about this work and what's great about the food depository is that, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you meet the basic need, if right. you need um, food, you can have start to have other conversations. Um, another mm -hmm. example is with health providers. We're starting to, um, we've opened uh, a pantry mm -hmm. at both Jesse Brown um, Veterans Administration Medical Center a, as well as Heinz mm -hmm. and uh, in Maywood. And really uh, starting to make the link um, between directly between health and food access. Okay. And um, we're starting to work with other health providers as well. Mm -hmm. So food as a bridge to these other conversations is, mm -hmm. is, uh, is something that um, we enjoy doing at the Food Depository. Right, it's more than just bread. It, it is, uh, absolutely. So uh, tell me, uh, um, well you mentioned veterans. Yes. Uh, you work also with a lot of veterans groups? We do. Mm -hmm. So. Um, in 2013, mm -hmm. we opened at um, Jesse Brown um, VA Center. And that was because uh, of the acute need, but mm -hmm. also a lot of advocacy around mm -hmm. within the food depository. A lot of our staff are veterans. Mm -hmm. And um, Angel Luluz is who, who you've met as well, is mm -hmm. a veteran as well. And he mm -hmm. really led our effort. Uh, to say, That's hey, awesome. here's a community that really needs support. Mm -hmm. And once we got in there, um, it was amazing. I mean, er every time we distribute um, uh, twice a month, and uh, we have on average about 150 veterans come through Jesse Brown alone. Mm -hmm. Last November, we opened at Heinz, mm -hmm. and uh, the same thing. 
um, you know, veteran population. They could be housing stable, but many of them are homeless. All of them come to the VA Medical Center for medical needs. Right. And so it's a great way to connect the dots and mm -hmm. make sure that our veterans are, are have access to um, healthy, nutritious food. Well, um, and that's, to me, that's a, a little heartbreaking, to, you know, these individuals who have put their lives on the line a lot of times for, mm -hmm. for the country by serving that way, having to have deal um, or actually to need these services. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's sobering, it, it, mm -hmm. you know, it really mm -hmm. is. But to talk to the veterans mm -hmm. and really understand, they are so appreciative Mm -hmm. um, of, you know, not only the work at the medical center, but our work as mm -hmm. well. Right. Um, it is. It, it, it's sobering. Yes. And, you know, and um, I wish we could, as a society, do much more. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're we're doing what we can, right. you know, in With meeting an immediate need. Right. But, and hopefully everybody else picks up, picks up their piece of work and, mm -hmm. and really does it on behalf of, uh, you know, people who, who serve our country. Right. And, and uh, now I do want to, uh, switch the focus and uh, talk about your summer meal pro programs because uh, your focus is mainly on children as you were had started sure, mentioning yeah. at, in the beginning of the program. Right. So mm -hmm. on um, on average, one about one in five children in Cook County are food insecure. It's meaning 20 percent. 20 percent. So mm -hmm. it means that um, those children don't know where their next meal is going to come from and mm -hmm. they don't know if they can afford it if mm -hmm. they have access to it. Um, it's really acute in the summer because school's out. Mm -hmm. um, most kids in public school systems and maybe you know, across the board, whether it's parochial or public or private, mm -hmm. um, are qualified for free and reduced lunch, meaning mm -hmm. they, their family income is below uh, a certain level and they would qu qualify for free and reduced lunch. Mm -hmm. um, so kids during the school year um, have this great um, resource. They, right, they right, right. eat breakfast and lunch um, for the most part uh, every day of the, every day of the working week. Mm -hmm. um, but in the summer, all that goes away. Schools are shut down. Um, mm -hmm. uh, many of the community-based programs are closed. Everybody's like, you know, it's summertime. It's summertime. Everybody right. should be out. What the challenge is, families really can't afford those extra meals. Right. So once the child goes without free and reduced lunch, then the family's really struggling to put a uh, really healthy um, and uh, adequate amount of meals uh, on the table. Mm -hmm. And so we saw this as a need and you know, we've, uh, we work with a lot of partners across the county to uh, produce um, um, meals and get them to where kids are. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple of great uh, programs. One is called a lunch bus. And it's a. I saw I saw pictures. Right. Of that, yeah. It's mm -hmm. really awesome. And uh, by the way, is we have a great set of volunteers and AmeriCorps staff that mm -hmm. operate it day in day day out. And we have um, 21 sites across the county, in really um, in areas where there's high, a, a high need. Mm -hmm. um, so for south, exam su south suburbs, mm -hmm. um, for example. So Chicago, Chicago Heights, um, Harvey, Phoenix. Mm -hmm. um, in, in those areas uh, we operate. And then we go on the south side, like Inglewood, and mm -hmm. on the west side, like Garfield Park communities. Or, or Lawndale. And, and Lawndale. Mm -hmm. So we make these uh, stops at parks, at libraries, at community-based organizations. We show up at a specific time, and mm -hmm. we deliver, the, the kids are, are for, mo for the most part, the kids are already lined up waiting for us. And uh, we go through these stops and distribute meals. Um, so just a single meal? For uh, it's a single meal, but it's every day. Every it's every day. day. Yep, every day. Wow. So uh, we're on track um, uh, to, uh, to do about 400,000 meals 400, this meals. summer. 400,000 This meals. summer. And for you, the summer runs from? So basically it started um, the first week of June, and it'll run through the end of August. Through the end of August. Mm-hmm. Well, wow. and so are parents with these children or? or um, sometimes, but mm -hmm. usually, you know, if you go to a park, the kids are already out there playing, right? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, what we see is um, for the very young children, the parents are there. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And then this program is uh, really uh, designed for children under 18 years old. Mm -hmm. um, so the parents can't necessarily participate, but their children can access the program. Mm -hmm. And then, as I said earlier, we have a great network of 450 food pantries, soup kitchens, and shelters that the adults can access mm -hmm. at any given time. So, uh, so uh, let's say I wanted to volunteer for one of these these buses, or, or do you have one bus? Or no, we have three actually. So three. we're locked in. Mm -hmm. I mean, actually, <laughs> the the people are are really clamoring to you know, volunteer on the bus. So we pretty much lock it in um, right before summer start, starts okay. in terms of the volunteers. So if people wanted to volunteer for next year, they yeah, should? Yeah, so what I would suggest is you go to our website, mm -hmm. chicagosfoodbank.org, and go to the volunteer section. And we have a really great tool to say, here's what you, you can say, here's what you want to do. Here's what available slots are open. And mm -hmm. just sign up that way. It's that simple. OK. And what does it take? How much commitment? Yeah. Um, well. Uh, there's there's a couple of different levels. So mm -hmm. for summer, it's really pretty intense. I mean, it's a serious commitment. Sun up to sundown. Um, it's basically uh, about eight thirty in the morning. It mm -hmm. runs through three. Okay. Yeah. It's, so it's a job. It, it, it's a, like a it's, job. Yeah. But um, we have we're fortunate to have a great volunteer base that we have people that are willing to dedicate that kind of time, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Um, and then, but there's always opportunities to work, you know, volunteer at the food depository itself. We're always in need. Um, we're always repacking and um, uh, food and and putting it in um, mm -hmm. in sizes that we can get out to the community in a in a really good way. What's the greatest uh, hands-on need that you that the food depository faces? On a, I'm sure you're pretty efficient, but um, that right. you know, there might be an area where you. Or you need somebody there with their hands and feet helping to, to right. do something. So two things. One is mm -hmm. um, your local pantry. Mm. Get to know your local pantry, and that's a great place to volunteer. Okay. You can again, you can go to our website, mm -hmm. put in your zip code, and see where the nearest pantries are. Call them up and say, "Hey, I want to volunteer." Mm -hmm. And every time you'll 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 get a positive response. The second mm -hmm. option is come to the food depository. So. Um, we, you know, we get these huge um, donations of grains that we have to break down, or cereal that we break down, and mm -hmm. uh, into smaller packages. Like and rice, rice, um, mm -hmm. c rice, um, oat cereal, mm -hmm. um, beans. Mm -hmm. You know, and we get these in these huge totes. Mm -hmm. We also get like apples and pears, and you know, mm -hmm. all different kinds of fruit. So there's always an opportunity to come out, we will put you to work. There's, you know, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And if people wanted to make a monetary donation, they would just go to your website Yeah, as well, you can right? go to our website as well. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, so you have these these, bus, these buses going out. You have all these people in, in food pantries, and you're making the call for uh, you know, people to call them and, uh, and lend their time, Absolutely. lend their energy. Um, how? How does the surrounding community respond to when you come in and they see that you're working there? Um, it, it's positive. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we uh, communities see us in a few different ways. They see mm -hmm. us through our pantry. So mm -hmm. when they see our produce mobile, for example, um, do a distribution, okay. um, they see us there. They see us um, when they go into their church basement. They hear their pastors or mm -hmm. their congregation leaders talk about their partnership with the food depository. Mm -hmm. um, so when our vehicles show up, it's, it's almost always positive and, um, and especially for the kids. When, so the lunch bus is, you know, brightly colored, you know, designed and really uh, kid friendly. Um, and, you, you know, to see them just line up and, w and wait and cheer us on and things like that. Uh, is pretty amazing, and then the uh, you know the volunteers at the pantries and the soup kitchens and the shelters, they know mm -hmm. that um, the kind of level of service that we provide mm. and the quality of food. Um, so you know you know all the, all day long, we're really fortunate to have a great network mm -hmm. of supporters in the community, supporters on the you know on the funding side, supporters right. on the food donation side. So everybody could, I mean, in essence, what I'm hearing from you is if you want to contribute to the Greater Chicago Food Depository or their work in some way, 
there's no wrong door. Right, right. There's, <laughs> there's no, wrong, no wrong door. Right. Yeah. Um, I do want to talk about um, hunger in general because um, I keep hearing, uh, mm -hmm. maybe I'm mistake. I don't know, maybe I'm hearing the wrong news, but that the economy is improving, the unemployment rate mm -hmm. is going down, um, and people are doing better. Right. You know, in, right. in quotes. Right. What are you seeing out there uh, on the ground? What we're seeing um, is, yes, there are more people working, mm -hmm. but there's also more working families visiting pantries. And, mm -hmm. uh, and this is particularly sobering because um, wages have been stagnant and have not you know, gone up right, um, right, right. proportionately to the expense of living. Right, right, and right. so families are making trade-offs every single day between housing costs and food between medical costs and food. Wow. In Chicago and Cook County in the Midwest, it's a, in the winter, people making trade-offs between paying the light and heat bill with food. And so on average in our last study through Feeding America, a hunger study, um, the average use for um, a individual or family using the network is about nine times a year. Nine times a year. So it's no longer an emergency feeding system, it's a supplemental. People are using it to supplement um, their normal purchases. Right. A lot of families may be on SNAP as well. So mm -hmm. SNAP is the uh, link card in Illinois, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. And there were cutbacks of that, right? About there were, there were. Um, so there was a, oh, um, nationally, mm -hmm. Congress decided to reduce funding for SNAP. In Illinois, um, SNAP, the level of SNAP was kept the same, fortunately. And a lot of states were, suffered cuts. Um, but now, you know, um, we just learned uh, LIHEAP, the, um, the heating and heating assistance program right. is being cut. Well, that won't play out until the winter, but um, it's going to have huge impacts. Because that's unconscionable, if, in, my, in my opinion. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is. I mean, I think um, we, first, we have to find a way to um, get our state back on track on, mm -hmm. in terms of the budget. And then, right. Um, but the impact on the most vulnerable mm -hmm. really hurts. Um, right. So this winter, we're really uh, afraid that people will make trade-offs between heat and food. Um, mm -hmm. as, as the heating costs rise, um, the food budget goes down, and people will visit our network more. So it has direct, every, everything's connected. Everything has a direct impact on the other. Um, what, we do, what we do really well at the food depository is advocate on on mm -hmm. programs that um, make sure that families have access to um, access to food and access to quality food. So SNAP um, is a big, mm -hmm. uh, we play a big role in terms of making sure individuals and families have a at least ap access to um, SNAP benefits. And we work with individuals and families on their applications. We work through Illinois Department of Human Services to make sure those applications go through. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we're not doing it alone. There's a number of the great mm -hmm. partners that do uh, SNAP work as well. Um, but it's, it's really critical. So to answer your question, um, more people are mm -hmm. jobs, mm -hmm. but more people are working that are visiting pantries every right, single so day. Because wages are so, yeah. so poor. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you've given us a lot of great information today. Um, I'm really glad there is an organization like yours out there doing this. Uh, thanks so much for yeah, coming thank out you, today. Mark uh, you're, thank uh, you. And um, I hope to meet you out in the field one of these days. Yeah, absolutely. Look forward to it anytime. Thanks. All right. Thank you. And to you, our audience, thank you for joining us. Community Forum is a service of Can TV. If your nonprofit organization would like to work with Can TV, call 312 738 1400 and ask for nonprofit services. Tune into Community Forum for local issues and concerns every Saturday at 7.30 p.m. on CAN TV 21. I'm Juan Carlos Hernandez. Thank you for joining us.